Chide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim to this barren land. I am weak, but thou art my home. Thy thou powerful arm, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Lead me on thy journey through strong deliver us strong deliver us be thou still my strength and shield be thou still my strength and shield when I tread the path of Jordan be my ansha fear subsum dead of dead and her destruction lie me safe on kind and side songs of praise songs of praise I will ever give to thee I will we are praying that the Lord guide us through this pilgrim journey that we are having as we are heading to heaven. We thank God for this day and we thank him for his providence in each and every step of life. And today I'm going to speak on the subject, the time that remains, the time that remains. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, what a blessing that we can approach your throne of grace with full confidence that you are our Father. What a joy that we can hear our prayers as we pray. How I pray this morning you bless my dear listener. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Understanding of the times. The times in which we live, we need to know where we have come from. We need to know where we are. And we need to know where we are going. We need to understand when the Lord called us and where he has brought us into and where he is taking us as a people. And he brought us out of darkness unto his marvelous light. And that is the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. To understand the times in which we live, it calls us that we should give ourselves fully and completely unto him and we give ourselves unto Jesus our Savior and by doing that then we can say I surrender everything to all all to him we see many people they keep on clinging to the lives of sin those sins which they call darling sins sins which they have cherished in their lives and so they don't see the reason of them submitting to the will of God that it can change them once and for all. God's people, to understand the time that you live is first of all to know that you are alive, you are living for a purpose and you want to give your life fully and completely unto him that he should take care. God's people, to totally surrender of self and accept that he should enter in your heart and make a great transformation. Today, as you hear this word, you need to understand that you need to believe in him who was, who is, and who is to come. That we get from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8, that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the, 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 the one who was, who is, and who is to come. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And when you understand him and you give him his position, rightful position that he needs, then he makes you strong. 
When you are weak, then you are strong. This Savior calls us and tells us that we should come to the understanding of the times in which we live to know that we need to live for him alone, that we need to live like what of our calling as Christians, God's people. We need to renew our relationship with our Father. We have been away from sin. We, we, we have been separated. The Bible tells us that our iniquities, our sins, are the ones which have separated us from his love. That he loved us. He gave his life for us. He gave his son to die for us. He shed his blood for us. And by that reason, we are there to give him his due respect as our father. That's why we sing. Go, you be free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood. That power that is in the blood, it is the one, that precious blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary. We need to stand up for Jesus alone. To understand the times in which we live, it will call us, it will persuade us to stand up for Jesus alone. To stand up for Jesus alone. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it tells us of this goal that is set before us. That we should fix our eyes upon Jesus, who is the perfecter, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured all those things, those pain, those sufferings, those challenges, that for his sake of the challenges, we should get eternal life. What a shame that people who, are, that, that who he died for are just leaving him. They are not ready for him. It calls us that we should come back to our senses as the lost son did. And he decided to go back to the father. And I want to let you know, if we go back, we will be accepted. And this message that we are preaching now, we have the full confidence that it goes to the four corners of the earth. For we have a great commission that all authority from the book of Matthew chapter number 28, that it has been given all unto me, the Father says, Jesus says, that now go ye to all the world. And still that, 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 that same, same book, Matthew 24, verses 14, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world as a testimony. That is what we are doing. That many people should accept and know what they ought to do. God's people. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, it says that this message should reach to every nation, every kindred, every town, and every people. And when it has reached all those, those levels, then it should bring a transformation unto people's life for now and for eternity. God's people this morning want to let you know that the time that remains is the time that we should shut the gates of hell. That Satan is opening the gates of hell. That the floodgates of hell are wide open for the people to get lost. But all those people who will look unto Jesus, the author and perfect of their faith, the heaven will be there for them. God's people. For, for the Son, love this world so much that he gave his life for it. We also need to give our life unto him that he should keep us safe. And he is the one now who is calling us. And he is telling us from the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 that being confident of this one thing, that he who started good work in you, he is faithful and just and he will complete it on the day of Christ Jesus. He started good work in you. He called you from darkness unto his marvelous light. And for that reason, what you need to do, God's people, is to accept the time in which we live. Is to diligently seek the Lord while he might be found. The time in which we live, God's people, is the time that we should amend our ways and actions as a people, that we should be accepted unto his throne of grace. The time in which we live, God's people, is the time to rescue the perishing rescue those people who are going to get lost and call them into the custody of Jesus Christ. 
the time in which we live is the time to seek passionately those people who are in the life of sin. When we use the word passion, it's accorded, it's conjoined, it's intertwined with love of the heart. That cannot leave someone to perish. The time in which we live is the time in which we should diligently search our hearts and see if we have anything wrong against our God that we have anything wrong in our families, whether as, as parents, are we educating our children well? The Spirit of Proverbs says that parents are acting in their family as the teachers and as the educators and as the, 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 the instructors of the Word of God. So you are the custodians as parents of the Word of God that you should instruct your children how they should live. We should diligently search our hearts. Are you searching out your heart? What is there that may make you, that may block you from entering into his throne of grace? It's my humble prayer that as we press forward to the heavenly award, may God help us in Jesus' name. Dear laughing Father, we are pressing on. Though we are pulled back by the snares of the devil, but we know that as we fix our eyes unto you, we will prefer. Give us that power and understanding, I pray in Jesus' name.